so we actually started our first flip back in June of 2020. This is right when the pandemic just popped off. Long story short, we were wholesaling properties up until we built enough capital to actually invest in the house. So we needed maybe around um, around 15 to 20 thousand dollars. We so we basically wholesaled houses until we we built up to about 15 to 20 thousand. And uh, we located a house. So we bought a wholesale deal for $100,000 and we basically flipped that house. So yes, we did. So basically when I say we paid cash for it, it's just like a tr traditional loan. Um, at any time you get a traditional loan, you uh, you put up a, a down payment. So the loan and, and the loan will pay the rest of your, uh, of the money's owed to the house. It's the same scenario with hard money. Um, they gave us maybe about 80% 80, 80 of the amount needed. So the house was 100,000, or rather the purchase price was 100,000. And uh, they basically required us 20%. So we had to bring $20,000 to the table. Um, we did not live in this property um, with the hard money route. If you take the hard money route, when you invest in properties, um, you, they don't allow you to legally live in the house. Um, so we did not live in the house. There, it wasn't any type of house hack. We just simply utilized hard money. We renovated the property and then we sold it. It took us approximately two months to sell this house, um, three weeks to renovate and then another three weeks to actually sell the property. How many houses can we finance at a time? So you can actually finance as many houses as, as you possibly can, as long as you can afford to, to uh, purchase the property and afford to make the monthly payments if need be. Um, the hard money lenders will allow you to purchase as many properties um, at, at a time. So the uh, amount of time you need to purchase a property when, when you utilize hard money, is way quicker than traditional lending. With traditional lending like FHA, conventional, USDA, um, or whatever, the underwriting process takes anywhere from 30 days up to 45 days, maybe even longer. With hard money, typically it takes um, a week tops, right? What takes the longest is really the alternative, the closing attorney, at which they need time to actually go through the title search, make sure it's a clear title, clear and marketable, and then actually get you on schedule to close on the house. Um, but realistically, all they need is about a week to hard money lender. Um, so it's, it's really not a long waiting period. I say at most up to two weeks. That's why when I make my offers, I, I, I put a 14 day close on there and that's really enticing to your sellers. Repairs aren't being made with personal cash whatsoever. So the really cool thing about hard money is you can actually roll in your renovation budget into your loan. So for example, if you have a loan of a hundred, um, if you if you have a purchase price, if you're buying a house for a hundred thousand dollars, and your lender requires twenty percent of that up front, right? So twenty thousand um, dollars, you could actually roll in your renovation budget into that eighty thousand dollar loan. Right. So that means uh, so let's say you have a, a house that requires twenty thousand dollars towards renovation and your purchase price is one hundred thousand. Um, you, you're all in one hundred thousand. So eighty thousand plus twenty thousand. So really on your loan, you're paying for the amount that they're financing or the amount that they're charging you to purchase the property, the eighty thousand dollars in addition to the twenty thousand renovation budget. So um, you don't you don't have to come out of pocket to, to renovate properties but you do want to budget to prevent that, to prevent you actually having to come out of pocket uh, to renovate the property. So essentially you do want to get a crew to do your repairs. Um, with this process that we take, we're all about working smarter, not harder. So um, we actually utilize our budget um, the cost towards paying for our contractors in, within our renovation budget. So we don't have to come out of pocket to do any of this. Um, now, by, by any means, if you're, if you're a contractor and you're able to do the work, that's cool. But let's think about that. Think about how much longer it's going to take you to finish these properties. 
we're finishing it within a three week to a one month time frame by hire simply hiring out on our job so um, we don't do any work whatsoever i mean if we do any work it's minor jobs such as um, um electric work i'll hang hang light pictures small things like that but for the majority yeah we, we definitely have people to do the work for us we hire out Starting off, um, you definitely want to have a contractor walk the properties with you. Um, there's no way, in, there's no possible way for you to know everything unless you're a contractor. Uh, but for mo in most cases, you guys are brand spanking new as a flipper, as an investor. So it's best practice to actually bring a contractor with you while you rock, walk your properties and have them give you an estimate as far as the cost of all the repairs and renovations. And as you progressively get through each deal, as long as each deal is some, somewhat of the same, a lipstick deal, then you're sort of gain knowledge as far as what costs what and how much what what costs. Um, so and then you won't actually have to bring a contractor with you. You'll know all the costs up front whenever you start making your, your offers and when, whenever you start walking the, the properties. So um, that's how we calculated our bids, our repairs, basically starting off in our first house. We had contractors come with us whenever we walked the properties and uh, they would give us their quotes as far as how much things cost and materials. We strictly stick to lipstick repairs. Um, we don't necessarily require any permits to do our repairs because all we're doing is stop some painting the walls and putting new flooring down. I think the most we've done as far as uh, a repair is or a renovation is knocking knocking down a wall, but that doesn't require a permit. So at any point that you require a permit, you're doing a little bit too much. Well, again, I'm not going to knock that game. That's just something that we don't we don't do on our end. We literally stick to lipstick renovations, meaning uh, we're not going to go above and beyond to fix up a house because in this market, we've learned that um, you know all your all you want to do is just add lipstick to a property. And it'll, it'll sell for a good profit. So um, we don't necessarily deal with any type of repairs that require permits. Best practice, you know, me being a real estate agent, I'll always tell people to get an inspection done on their, um, within their due diligence on any property that they're attempting to, to purchase. I say this because uh, you sort of want to work backwards whenever you're applying your renovations. And what I mean by that is based on the repairs needed from the inspection, you want to go ahead and knock those out so that whenever you put the property on market, um, the buyer won't have any repairs that they're going to request. So it'll be a quicker close and you get to save a little bit more money in your pocket. So the ideal amount of money to be invested, it really depends. So with my investment program, I actually partner people together. Um, so it really depends on, you know, if you're partnering or if you're purchasing the property by yourself and also the purchase price. So if you're partnering, typically, let's say we have a house for $120,000. Um, if you're partnering, that's going to, a house for 120 dollars probably cost you about fourteen to fifteen thousand dollars. If you're splitting that uh, that deal, if you're if you're purchasing that house by yourself, twenty percent of one twenty, it's it's around maybe twenty five, twenty eight thousand dollars, right? So um, it truly depends on if you're again if you're partnering or if you're going to purchase the property by yourself. Ideally, I'd say again if you're partnering, you want to have between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars saved up. If you're doing a deal by yourself, you want to have anywhere between. Um, uh, twenty-five and thirty-five thousand. Just uh, in the event something happens, but again, it just—it truly depends on your purchase price. No one knows. Um, that's that's not a number that I can give off off the bat. It, it truly depends on what we actually purchase the price the property for, the renovations, the repairs, the renovation budget, and if you're partnering or if you're purchasing the property by yourself. Me personally, I am a real estate agent. I actually recommend. Um, for you all to look into becoming a real estate agent. You save so much more money becoming a real estate agent by buying and selling your own houses. In addition, there's a lot more money to be made whenever uh, you are a real estate agent. So you can sort of capitalize by, um, you know, making 
making even more money by helping people buy or sell houses in addition to your own houses. There's just a lot more money being made if you're a real estate agent. However, if you're not a real estate agent, all you simply want to do is connect with uh, real estate agents in your, in your local town or city. Um, you want to work with investor-friendly agents. Try to find someone who doesn't charge a full 3% whenever they're attempting to sell or buy your house. Um, those type of agents I, I usually like working with because, again, the whole objective of it is to save as much money as possible. So um, if you do end up working with a, a, person, a real estate agent, if you not, are not an agent, you um, you want to find an investor friendly agent so that you can save you can save money and um, um, save money and, and capitalize more once you once you sell your property. Yeah, so whenever we go through our renovations or whenever we put a property on market, we never have a buyer in mind. Um, we literally just finish your renovations and put it on market. Um, it, if you're doing a good job with your renovation, nine times out of 10, you're gonna have a lot of people looking at your house, coming to ask questions while you're renovating. Um, I like to create a lot of foot traffic, meaning um, right before we put it on market, I let people in the neighborhood come and walk the, walk the property. You never know who's gonna buy the house, but long story short, yeah, we don't, we never have any buyers in mind. That would be great if you have a buyer to sell to prior to even putting it on market. That way you can just have a quick close. But in our case, yeah, we just put it on market, sell it, move on to the next house. Whenever you're making offers, you want to be the best bid by adding incentive, right? So, um, you know, when I what I do, I typically make offers with that are near near asking, near the buyer's or seller's asking price. I also offer a higher earnest money deposit, small amount of due diligence days, um, and me being a real estate agent, I do things that um, that incentivize the deal even more like saving the seller even more money. Now, if you wanna get a bit more into that process as far as how to be the best bid, um, you'll need to go through our step-by-step -step guides in the buying stuff. I dig in really deep as far as uh, how to win bids and what to do to, to be the best bid, right? So again, you want to you want to go through our step-by-step -step guide and, and look into the buying stuff. In there, I have a few videos that'll sort of walk you through how to be the best bid. I actually do recommend rental properties. That's the end game for everybody. Uh, simply put, because that's uh, that's passive income. That's mailbox money. You literally don't have to do anything with the exception of man uh, uh, maintaining those properties, right? So, um, yeah, rental properties are always they're the end game for us. I want to have as many as, as possible multifamily units, whatever the case may be. I, I definitely want to get rental, get into rental properties. You can actually. And you can actually utilize hard money to purchase rental properties. But again, um, I dig in deeper to that with that in our step-by-step -step guides. If you want to learn more, you have to purchase that and um, take a look in our step-by-step -step guides. So there's always an issue that you're going to run into in the flipping game. So don't ever think it's going to be a sweet renovation. Now, granted, there are times where things work out beautifully and the flip is great. There's nothing that, that goes wrong. But that doesn't always happen. There's always something that goes wrong. Uh, nine times out of ten, things that you do not plan for, right? So um, that's why you create a. That's why you sort of um, you budget properly whenever you do request the monies from your lender. That way, in the event something happens, you planned out for it, and you had that monies from your your lender to pay for any discrepancies. Otherwise, you'll be having to come out of pocket, out of your own pocket to uh, to sort of work with any uh, unanticipated issues. So um, this is something that you'll have to look into uh, under our step-by-step -step process. Again, if you were interested in how to learn about, how to learn how to apply for hard money, this is something that I dive into deeply in our step-by-step -step guide. So if you're interested in learning more, go ahead and purchase one of our plans and we'll go ahead and get the, the process started. So let's get it.